virology. Here we go. Um, so when we talk about SARS-CoV-2, we're talking about a beta coronavirus, and it comes from bat coronaviruses. Now, this is the largest RNA virus. So you've heard about those vaccines, right? The mRNA viruses. So this is the same one uh, that uh, that is uh, geared towards the RNA of that. Now, by the way, look at that. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. 10 to 30 percent of the common colds are due to coronavirus. Statistically speaking, you have already been exposed to the coronavirus at some point in your life because statistically speaking, you've already had a common cold. By the way, that's why we say, Mark, I don't understand. Why is it that some people, when they get the coronavirus, are not so bad? And other people, when they get the coronavirus, they have a lot of trouble, right? So one of the issues could be is that you're going to be able to see that on these people, they may have had the common colds before, and they may have some antibodies towards those other components. And so when they get exposed to the coronavirus, uh, they've already kind of seen it before, and that's one of the reasons why they may be having a lighter reaction, right? Called corona because it looks like the sun under a microscope. And then there's what the term stand for SARS. Now there's a re relative of this, MERS. And we're gonna be talking about this because this is a very similar related cousin to SARS. And this comes up where you're trying to take a look at uh, how we evaluate this, okay? So uh, what's the history here, right? So questionably it jumped from horseshoe bats. So this is the stuff that gets in the literature about what happened, where did it happen, how did it happen and stuff. I don't know if we're ever gonna get a straight answer on that stuff uh, because you know part of it comes uh, out of China, which you know sometimes it, there's not as uh, an open dialogue there. Um, you, they always talk about the wet market, but probably not related to the wet market. And um, and there is some more recent literature that maybe it was more of an engineered virus, but you know who knows? You're never going to be able to get to the bottom of this kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, and then why bats? Because bats live for 25 years in large groups, right? Because they live in large groups they tend to get infections that spread around. So they're gonna have more and more mutations in those uh, bats. And bats are mammals, right? So now you start seeing, okay, hey, these are similar animals to us. They live a long time, they live in large groups. So now you can see why those viruses go circulating around, right? By the way, there was a lot of research papers that said that there was gonna be a pandemic. Those papers as, as recently as 2015, 2016, were saying, look, just the odds are that some virus is gonna break through and cause trouble for us, right? So this is not to be uh, unexpected, right? The SARS came before, look, look at this, look. We had the first outbreak in 2003, 2004. Now that lasted only nine months. There's about 8,000 infections. Look at that mortality rate, okay, 10%. I want you to keep these numbers in mind. This is very important. Look at those numbers, right? SARS, MERS, the closely related cousin. Look at the mortality rates for those things, right? Which is why when you see those large mortality rates, you're gonna compare it to the current infection, you're gonna see a big difference, which is why when you look at these past ones, you see that they didn't last very long, right? Keep that in mind. All right, is reinfection possible? Everybody talks about the virology, is reinfection possible? Yes. Um, but generally there's been no human reinfection with the same virus. Yes, there have been some of these variants you've heard about, some of these mutations, right? Well, a couple things. One, mind you, influenza mutates about 50 times a year, corona about 25 times a year. That's why, by the way, we give a flu shot every year because the flu shifts around a lot. Corona doesn't shift as much. So when you start hearing about this stuff, oh my God, I heard about... Belgium, Nevada, Hong Kong, South Africa, the UK, all kinds of stuff. Okay, look, look, look. Anything is possible, right? So it's true that they have some variation, but the majority of the virus is the same. It's true that some of these new strains might be more virulent, meaning they're more easily able to jump from person to person. But it's not necessarily so that they're more lethal. As a matter of fact, it can go both ways. Mutations happen all the time, and a lot of them are benign. By the way, I showed you that the common cold due to coronavirus, right, has those um, uh, uh, experience of 10 to 30 percent causing the common cold. Those are not severe. People don't have bad problems with that. So you can start to see why it's going to be the kind of scenario 
where you don't necessarily have a big problem with it, it may not be causing more difficulties for you, right? Okay, next. This is what the coronavirus looks like. That's a model of it. Let's take another look. Look, 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 look at this, look at this. S protein, that's the spike protein. That's the one that all but one, all but one of the vaccines is geared towards that spike protein, right? The M protein, the matrix protein, that there's one uh, vaccine that's geared towards that, but spike protein, the most specific and also the strongest at attaching, right? So that's the one that we're focusing the efforts on with the vaccines. Okay, now we go to rest stop. Okay, this is social distancing uh, then and now. So we've talked about virology. I wanna talk to you about epidemiology, okay? Here we go, stay with me. 